Okay, uh, this problem, in fact, in Buddhism was solved with the notion of vacuity. So there is a theory about that. You give the example of Aristotle, and I just want to say you something. For example, we agree that the position, I prefer, of course, Archimedes, but we don't care about that. So, <laughs> okay. it, it, In my it, field, Aristotle yeah. <laughs> was more significant. Okay, okay. So it's okay, it's okay. But I mean, you, when he puts his stone, okay, imagine though that it was significant, okay, very important. Now you remove all the stones and Aristotle plays the same move. No significant. So uh, the significant... Completely insignificant, yeah. Yes, Amazing. so in fact, the, the, the value of the move depends on the previous. So it means what? It means that when you say it's my turn and I want to put this stone here and I want the others to consider this very important, it's impossible to do it alone you use shoulders of others. So the way you think that, you know, it was mentioned by Newton is, can I use the previous one to be the first of the next one? Hmm. So you see, it's not only selfishness to say, oh, I want to have the best move. In fact, we don't care about the best move. We want just the good move. So the good move is with other moves, what is the good move to avoid something? And if you say just the best is, for example, in soccer, you say, oh, I put a goal. Great. My team loses. We will yeah. say it's, it's important to win as a team. So now imagine that you don't have any goal. And I mean in soccer, uh, and you say my team wins. It's important, no? So I mean, what is important for you? It's important in the restricted area of your relation to be considered as an important guy or to let this be free. Because if it is free, you will be study by unborn guys and they yeah. will say okay you remember richard in 1000 years before made this move it was very good but no you are you going to be aware about that i don't think no so but... so the important things is not uh, necessarily to be considered as a good player for the guys who are around you now, but after. Well, yes, because, but even that is very, and it is actually great because it, it, it removes, it removes the idea of the perfect play from the table altogether, because depending on how history looks back at you, uh, when you made the move, you may have looked like the world's best player. Uh, I happen to eat a plant-based life, right? I think at some stage in history, yeah. people will look back and think perhaps that the way that a lot of animals are treated right now is very, very bad. Now, somebody might be a billionaire in that field and feel like they've done a really great thing and you know, look at what they've done with their play. But history may not look back at them in the same way. And the way we see this play out is uh, uh, history looked at many people 100 years ago as uh, you know, having played such significant moves in their turn that they built them a statue. And a hundred years later, they tore them down again. Yep. And so we, I, th I, so there's a few things that I loved about what you said. And actually the one is, is so freeing. The, the first is that we cannot dictate whether our move is going to be a fantastic move or a terrible move. It actually just says that what we have to do is to try and play a good move. And yeah. What you realize is, yes, the humanity is playing a game, but let's say humanity was playing against a mirror humanity. What the winner is actually the team that has the highest percentage of good moves. It's not about who has the few great moves. It's about the most consistent good moves. Yes. So now you realize as a human, 
Actually, the beautiful thing is your victory condition is very, very simple. It's not play the best move. It's simply play a good move. Make your life a good life. Play a good move and add to society in, in, in the right way. And that's actually very liberating because it takes off, it takes the burden away from you to feel that you have to um, excel in some way that is unreasonable. Yes, that's the point. And I mean that the game is history. Huh, yes, the game is absolutely history. So you have only one player and he is main kind. He has time and he's playing only one thing, history. Not present and future or past, but history because we have to write down what are the moves and you yes. see that okay so you will we agree totally and again every move if we sit down to my favorite game is a game called tack uh tak well worth checking out i think you'd love it and um yes I but would the only my, my state is highly dependent on the game state at the, so i can have a perfect move in fact the way most people lose a tack is that they play ahead so what happens is I plan the road that I want to build. I can see how my pieces, I know what my next three moves are. The problem is that I played that entire thing in my head in absence of your next three moves. And so what happens is I get so excited about my big winning move on the next turn that I forget that actually your move that you're just about to play has changed everything. But because yeah. I'm so focused on the future and not focused on the current reality, the, the history of the game state, I make a bad move, which causes me to lose. So you almost always lose when you fail to see a historical move that has been played because you're too busy thinking about the future one that you're going to play. And this understanding for me of the idea that we are all actually playing, uh, we're all just playing the next move. That's, that's it. Our turn is just simply okay. the next turn. We, we agree, we turn. agree. But I mean that in society and in life one, if you prefer, we always play like a Markov chain, which means that uh, the past is not important. The only thing which is important is the present. So we are playing the best move in the present condition. And in life too, we understood what? There is no present without history. So we have to make historical moves and historical moves are not the best but only the good yeah yes i can i can i can see why uh i can see that as a as a as a state uh, we talk about in technology they refer to infrastructure inversion yeah that uh, technology isn't interesting until such time as something else happens. So Facebook was designed and people are, let's say right now we live in a world with cryptocurrencies and things like that. They weren't interesting, but we couldn't see what they were while they were in the novelty phase. But then where they find their utility is that now we all live in a world where that is our history. So we're now all able to build on the foundation of the technology that was invented yesterday. And I guess that's what our job is simply to do, if, if, if I'm understanding correctly, that our, our primary role uh, in life is less defined on the sh how high we stand on the shoulder we've climbed upon, but on who is able to climb upon our shoulders in the future. Yes, yes. So it's adding to the tapestry of history is more important than anything we do. Yeah, yeah. And to go a little bit further again, for me, history is the memory of the future. History is the memory. How do you mean? Ah, of course, I, I yes, mean, because right now history only exists because I'm the future is remembering the past. Did, yeah. History didn't exist at the time in history. Absolutely. So the definition of what we are living right now, the good move is the good move for the memory of future. Yes. And after many years, you will say, oh, it was a good move. 
So the, the strange thing is that in fact, we define our present with the memory of future. So in this concept, we need to know many things before to use them and to realize that we are on the chain of these events. So if you decide in life two that you are a dot, a vertex in a network with only one player in the game of history, which is defined strategically as the memory of future, you can define your goals and you can say, okay, this is possible, but maybe it's easy. Can I try something which is impossible? So you remember that with uh, Li Shidol and uh, AlphaGo, uh, he played only one time to win. You remember it was the, the stone of the God. And th they said that uh, the computer loses only one game, okay? I mean, and, he learns. Yeah, no, 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 no. It, it was worse than that, Richard. In fact, when they saw the code, this move was possible for one in 10,000. But the programmer, the computer guy, said, okay, we don't use it. But <laughs> when they put the scratch version, alpha goes zero. He never made this mistake because he said, even in one in 10,000, maybe it's possible to do it. So I should study it. So I mean that in this area, if you are defined from zero without any restriction and you said freely, I don't play against one player, this player, I play with humanity. I play in this frame of work. And this means that what? You know, maybe sometimes we, we said in chess, uh, I have a book with the best uh, uh, plays I do with someone, okay. And for example, Fisher, you know, very famous guy. The important thing is what? Is to win Fisher or to be in his book when he wrote, this is my best 64 parties in chess. And then you will see that even if you are Najdorf and you lose with the Najdorf defense, <laughs> again, Fisher, it's very impressive because you put a very big stone and the other guys, climbed on your shoulder and said, okay, I can do even more just for humanity. Not for me, not for you, but we are cooperating to make something which is a gift and at the end, a legacy for the next guy. And the legacy may go to, so in your Fisher analogy, I mean, if you think about, so let's go back to Aristotle for a second. Yeah. Aristotle and rhetoric, um, the, the value of rhetoric, of course, was that uh, we understood that argument was the basis of all learning. So it makes you think that what makes actually Aristotle so great is not the quality of Aristotle's mind, but the quality of opponents he chose to argue with. So how much value, like, did the opponent who you would think, like, you know, lost the argument in the traditional sense of the word argument with Aristotle, but actually the value to humanity isn't one loss. It was the fact that they played that game at all. Yeah. Because it, only by playing the game, by being that game of significance, or was, so while in the meta game, because now that's all that it becomes. Like your life, there's small meta games, but you realize that's not your game. The meta game is uninteresting. The meta game is actually simply a move and a play that allows a larger game to to advance. And when you start thinking about it like that, it actually does make uh, um, the insignificance of life all of a sudden feel like it has so much more potential for significance. Yes, 
But remember that we have the tactical level, the operational level, the strategic level, high strategy level. Okay, for me, the point at the level of one human being is if the move at the tactical level can help something at the high strategy level. And this is a, a good definition for the tactical level because sometimes maybe the good move is only a sacrifice. So at the level of, of tactics is a very bad move, but at the level of high strategy is the only one to save the goal. Right, except that we can only behave tactically then because if you're playing historically, okay, so in, in, in let's say the game state, if we're playing historically, then we can only play tactically based on history. That is tactical. Strategy is based on the future, but what we're yeah. now realizing that in the game of life, we actually cannot take a, a fundamentally strategic view because it kind of goes back to that old story of, you know, the man with the horse. So, you know, what, is it good? Is it bad? Yeah, yes, but Richard, we agree. But you remember... Uh, history is only the strategy of the past. And strategy is only the history of the future. So th there is no so big uh, opposition. They are complementary. And if you get the two points, you will feel uh, the harmony of the both. Yes, but the idea is in oh, order you to said, play... You said yes, but you mean no. <laughs> no, I mean, yes. Uh, the idea that what I realize, and again, this, this is if I'm understanding you correctly, is that the most strategic move is, is actually a tactical one. Because understanding that the strategy will be written in the, the... You know, whether the move is strategic will be written in the future, the only basis we have is if I want to play strategically, what is the best tactical move I can make now, given the history? So we are doing a reactionary move historically based on the history, historic state we find ourselves in, as opposed to a, a pro-actionary move, yeah. a strategic move there. History will decide if that move was strategic, yes. but the, the life we're living is actually tactical. Yes, but this means that it's meaningful to have a good move at a tactical level because it's up to each guy to do this. I mean, each guy can do something important. The important thing is not to say it is important because the importance will be defined by mankind. Your role is to play something, but the way you play it is all the time you have to keep in mind the future and the memory of the future. So you don't play just to finish something, but to start something. And this is possible for every people. That's why for me, philosophically, it means that uh, the game belongs to mankind, but every man can do something in this game, which is important. Completely agree. So, and so it's beautiful because it does a lot of people worry that why I think what the nice thing is, is it takes away this whole obsession people have with purpose, yeah, you know, which yeah. is why a lot of people go to religion because they, they feel that I need to have a purpose. I need to, I need to do this, but you realize actually your purpose is, is relative or purpose as humanity is relatively simple is just make a, a better move. Like just feel that you're making a move for good. And so if you live a good life, you're technically, you know, to the best of your ability, you're te technically fulfilling the mankind purpose that is required of you is you're making a movement that progresses humanity in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, this helps. But I mean, the goal do not depend of strategy. The goal is a meta strategy object. So the meta strategy has no goals as only vision. So to complete the picture is, if you have the vision at the meta strategic level that the player is only mankind, your role is to have a legacy and put the stone in a correct manner to give to other people a good position for the next move. 
So mm. it's not a correction, it's a preparation for the future. With the future in your mind and not only history, because if you have only history, you are going to play the best move. If you have in mind the future, you are going to play the good move. Yeah, I think that is because the future, if you have in mind the future, you're almost trying to make a selfish move. Yeah. Whereas if you have in mind the history, you're trying to make a, a cooperative move for humanity as a whole. That's a point. Yeah, that's an amazing point. More people should think it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that we cannot also just forget the value of the meta game, And this is where the... No, no, we don't forget it. You know, we mm. don't forget it because we have to use it. Because the, the meta game, like meta mathematics and even Aristotle, because, you know, uh, you make a big stress about rhetorics. For me, Aristotle, uh, he, his good move is logic because he's the first guy, the first guy who was thinking how we are thinking. So syllogistics is not a part of rhetoric, it's a part of logic right now. And so the mathematical logic use it all the time and said, you know, the first good, good actions were created by Aristotle. So it's very important. This is a big legacy. And I'm a little bit upset with guys who forget this to show something else. But at the end of the process, I don't want to convince you about something. I don't care about that. Not now. I mean, with the Aristotle point of view, the purpose is, can I get something from the through? So, I mean, if I get something, I will use logic. I can uh, manage enemy, okay, but at the end, if your victory is not historical, it's only Pyrrhic, for example, is useless for humanity, we don't care about your, your victory. So uh, at the end of the process, because I, I, I saw you have also Gandhi, you could say that Gandhi at the end died in a very bad way, in fact, because it was a, a, an error. But all his work is a good move for history. So we don't care about this detail. We care about the idea that many people who have rights can do something even with very few tools and can win. So for me, uh, Gandhi is a very good example of many stones who can create dragon. You see only the stones, but at the end, you see it with the British Empire, okay? About the salt, just something like this, which is very impressive. He said, okay, it's possible because we are many. <laughs> and on the other side, one thing which is very important for me, for the British Empire, is if the British Empire was not, at the end of the process, a democracy, it was impossible to have a good strategy for Gandhi. Because, you know, it was possible for him to win the British Empire, but not the Soviet Union. Because the rules are totally different. In, at the end of the process, the British Empire was playing a fair game. So at the end, there is a recognition, okay, you win. But for the Soviet Union, it was totally different. Because when you see something like this, I mean, like uh, the revolution in India, with many people with a lack of big tools, it was impossible. Because right. they don't care. But, you know, you see this echoing today in a very political discussion. So I got into a debate on LinkedIn, actually, around about the time that we were together in Greece. And the debate was about um, a social group that had been created in, a, in an industry body. And this group had 
uh, LGBTQ plus people, it had women, and it had people of color. So basically, it was a categorization that was everybody except for straight white men. And, you know, I debated this as, as being a not, a not a good strategy. And the argument that came back to me is that, but these are, you know, but these people do not feel safe around me. And what I presented back is I said, well, actually, the only reason that you're allowed to attack me in this way is because we live in a state in which you are safe to have this attack. Yes. You would not be able to have this discussion in Rwanda or in some places in the Middle East or around Africa because you do yeah. not have the freedom. So we oh, in often, North Korea. Or North Korea. So we apply tyranny to actually people that have allowed us, or and I don't want to say that I've allowed something, but in, in states, like you said, the British Empire that allowed Gandhi to separate. But, you know, like we remember Gandhi and you talk about his death, but, you know, how would Gandhi be remembered if he lived beyond 47? You know, that's when the, the states of uh, uh, Pakistan and, and India were formed in the vacuum of of the British leaving, maybe then his activism would have been seen in a completely different light based on that state that existed because then the Brit the British Empire had removed itself from that play. And in fact, I would argue, you know, there's a whole other discussion that the way they removed themselves from play so abruptly is actually what has created this tension that exists today even. But that's that's another discussion. But your point about Gandhi was able to be Gandhi because bizarrely he was ostensibly playing against the british empire but he was able to play because of the british empire is yeah. very analogous for many of the struggles we see in identity politics and in politics today we agree totally by the way because you mentioned remember that in india is natural pakistan is not natural that's why we got at the end Bangladesh. Okay. Well, it was so, split. Yeah, because it was um, yes. east or north or south or east or west. I think it was east yeah. or west. But the, the it was not a split. It was two parts without mm -hmm. connection, and one of them was at the end removed. So I don't think it's a problem about the strategy of Gandhi. Uh, my point was only you, you got it. Uh, it was only that a good move in any game is, in fact, defined by if the game is fair or not. Yes, but if we go to, funny enough, this India thing again, if, if you look back historically at the, the move of the British Empire to leave the occup occupation of India, you, you could look at it with a... If you just look to the very basic play, you'd say, ah, oh, that was a good move. They, they did a nice move. They moved. But actually, the way they moved by just removing themselves, just by, <laughs> remo by removing themselves from play, they created a lot of the tensions that caused the current state to exist. Had they actually stayed in play a little longer, actually, they could have managed how India and Pakistan managed, because there's obviously a religious divide there as well, and how that would have been, and maybe, I mean, because it's not completely beyond the realm of imagination that there's still some sort of big battle game to be played between those two states, right? I think we can yeah. agree that th this is not finished. And I think, but it could have been, had it been, so what would, you know, some people would think was a good move. Uh, actually, I think the history might show it to be a very bad move. Although in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, people uh, would have looked at it and said, this is a good move. For example, you can take the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth, at the end, for me, is a meta game, And is a very good game at the level of the transformation of the British Empire to uh, United Kingdom. I just want to say this about the example as a paradigm is maybe the good way to play it was in fact to create the Commonwealth. We don't have to see only the local problem because maybe at the local level, you can say, oh, there was a problem, there was a battle. We agree, but at the end of the process, when you see all these problems, when you see uh, the battle of Churchill against Nazi, 
against communism, all, all those kind of things. Okay. And at the end, you see that United Kingdom is still here. For many reasons, you can, you know, uh, I know also the French case. It was a very big loss for France. I mean, when you compare the British Empire with the French Empire, uh, I think the good player was the British Empire. So maybe because you are also in South Africa, you see it in a different way. But for me, the importance of the both is, do you make the rule with democracy? Because, you know, when we say we play a fair game or not, this is meta game. So, for example, you can define some games which are impossible to play in a fair way and say, okay, I don't care, it's a game. Uh, we use it, this in strategy, because sometimes all the players are not rational. So we cannot, for example, we cannot use game theory. We can use only um, theory of power. But th the point at the end of the process is, even when you have a war and you have antagonism, do you have in mind that the only player is mankind? Because we see it with the nuclear powers. Uh, at one stage, we said that, you know, we can destroy 200 times the whole earth. It was incredible and very stupid, but we did it also. And after that, we made some change in USA, SSR, and all, all these things, you know. I mean, right now, uh, we are more conscious. And for me, the first, the life one for mankind stopped with the atomic bomb. And for me, uh, the life two starts at that time. After internet, we came to life three. But I don't want to start this. That's program. a whole other that's <laughs> a whole other discussion that we could get into. Yes. Um, and you know what I think a lot of these things do, did you ever remember hearing the story about the Chinese premier that was um went to visit Richard Nixon? And the 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 kind of famous quote is that they were having a conversation, they were talking about the French Revolution. And the minister was asked, you know, the Chinese minister was asked what he thought about the French Revolution. And he said, it's too early to tell. And of course, this was hundreds of years later. And I think that's what that's what the 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 and you know, some historians say he wasn't referring to that, but but actually I think he may well have been, because if you imagine he takes a go philosophy to it, then that was exactly the case. Yeah. If we're talking about the meta game of the French Revolution then you could say it was a good or a bad thing. It was a good thing that it happened and in the meta game was a good thing. But if you're looking at it in the, in the idea of the ongoing game of humankind, then of course, there's some argument to say, well, we're not sure yet because that story arc hasn't played out or extrapolated far enough for us to get a view of how that drop of monarchy and things like that uh, played out. And I think that is interesting. And, and I guess the point that I think as well is that is maybe worthwhile thinking about just when you talk about this idea of, say, destruction of humanity uh, with nuclear bombs, um, actually, it makes you think that is the term humankind even not too narrow? Is there not a larger game at play in which human, because the ultimate game is that I think we all pretty much expect that the game will continue after humankind has finished making its stones. So there is even within the macro game of humankind, that is still a very small meta game. Yes, correct, correct. But the, the point was only to say that historians don't make history. They just study it. Yes. Just strategics make history. So... Uh, I agree with you, we need time, but we are always in the frame of time. Time is always with us. The problem is if we are with time, uh, I just 
I want to say to you that it was a real pleasure to um, make this new connection with you right now. And uh, I thought already in Santorini that it was only the beginning. And now we prove that there exists the next step. So we can do it. I'm very excited about that. I mean, you know how I felt as I, when you got off the stage at the talk in Santorini, it was one of the most significant it was a, a the, the the idea of meta joy was one of those I I, I was two humans the, the 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 human before I heard that concept and the human after, and um, and that's why I just had to come up and and chat to you. I engineered my way into your lunch table, uh, <laughs> just so that we could speak. And um, the impact of your talk and the amount I've been thinking about it has been uh, amazing. And so even just for me, the the privilege of getting to continue this conversation and connection is is uh, very, very significant. And I look oh, forward to having... Oh, it's an honor for me. So thank, I look thank to you having for more. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And